cross over for 2021 and all these troubles and all the circumstances that we have to face. People fighting the virus and they're fighting uh, uh, financial uh, uh, disruption and fighting the uh, race relational situations and, and yet still we're here. And so, so that tells me something that as the part we're singing, what's to come? I wish I had a church. Praise Church, our tech team did an excellent job in putting together 
our New Year's worship. We're here live again this morning, but on New Year's, we did a virtual service only, and so God to be praised for everything that we've done. Also want to thank all of you for your giving to the ministry. There has been a blessing as we start off this new year of what God is already doing in people's lives. Those who know I am blessed just because I crossed the line in 2022. Thank God. <laughs> There's something out there is I'm blessed just for crossing the line in 2022. So right now, we're going to go into the Word of God this morning. We thank you for joining us, the praise team. So this is a brand new service. Get online and call people and let them know that um, we're on right now YouTube. Go to Facebook or go to Instagram. Come on, grab uh, Exodus chapter 3 and stand to your feet. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus 3, stand to your feet. We'll get those out later. Uh, don't. Exodus chapter 3. Amen. God has been good already. We have Exodus chapter 3. Will you stand with me just to represent the word of God? Begin at verse 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush, and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Let's pray. Father God, again we come to the time of preaching time. We come to a time that you open up the windows of heaven and pour out your anointing. You come and sit down in the midst of us. Let someone know in their house this morning that that is what you're doing. You're bringing them back to this new life, this new time in 2022. Lord, bless the words that I say be your words and the things that come out of my mouth be what you want. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to speak for as long as the Spirit of the Lord will allow from this thought. It's never too late to start again. It's never too late for a fresh start. One of the incidental trademarks of most great movies is that there is a line or a quote or several lines in the movie that people remember. And sometimes all you have to do is quote that one line and people remember what the movie is. They may not know the title, but they will be able to identify the movie because the quote is critical to the storyline or the plot. So I want to try this this morning. Y'all go with me. You don't know, can try it also. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say a line to show you this works, and I want you just to holler out the movie. Everybody with me? Raise your hand you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Just holler back at me if you know what the movie is. Are you ready? All right. I'll be back. All right. Arnold Schwarzenegger in Terminator. My mama always said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Barnes, get gone. They call me Mr. Tibbs. Heat of the night, 1748. They call me Mr. Tibbs. Show me the money. Show me the money. Benjamin Maguire. Jerry Maguire. Uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. in Jerry Maguire. I'm going to give him an offer that he can't. Godfather. See, y'all get this. Y'all catching this. Uh, you can't handle the 
truth. Come on, y'all, don't play God now. Jack Nicholson, there are a few good men. Come on, you can't. Right, you're going to need a bigger boat. Jaws, somebody got it. You put me in there. Come on, y'all, I'm going to give y'all a little quiz. Y'all can't pass this one. The next one is eat the cake, anime. Anime, eat the cake. What's love got to do with it? Okay, I'm better. Now, here is one of my favorites. I know y'all know y'all cast. I like action movies, so I know somebody knows this. As a matter of fact, when I started, somebody will know what I'm talking about. Here it is. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. But if you want ransom, I'll let you know I do not have any money. Mm -hmm. But what I do have is a set of particular skills. Skills that I have gathered through a long career. That I have gathered through a long career. And it makes people like me dangerous to people like you. Now, if you let my daughter go, good. Very me well. I won't chase you. I won't pursue you. I'm going to finish this with y'all. I just like this one. I'm going really, to pursue you. He said, but if you don't, I will find you, I will pursue you, I will find you, and I will kill you. Y'all come take my pleasure, right? That was taken. I love that movie. I said, good luck. Right? So, in the movie, when we get to these quotes, what you need to understand is, most of these quotes are critical to the storyline. If you were to look at it, they call me Mr. Tibbs. It's showing, the whole movie is showing how African Americans are discriminated against. But yeah, how Cindy Poitier is standing up showing that we can cross that line. If you look at I'll Be Back, it's showing the relentlessness of the Terminator. The Terminator was a relentless son. He kept going, kept going. The Godfather, I'm going to give him an offer that he can't refuse. That's just showing that when, when Don Vito Corleone made a statement, and as a mob, you know that some violence was going to happen. But there is a line in our text. There is a quote from our text. This text that I'm reading, within this pericope, there is a place that when I start describing the situation, even if you don't go to church, you don't go to Sunday school, most people will be able to identify what this is just by the lines that I'm about to say. And that is Exodus chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. Look at it. We all know this. We've all seen, you know, Ten Commandments. And you can probably picture this. But it says that when the Lord saw, he had turned aside to see. Exodus 3, 4, and 5. That God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. And he said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And he said, don't come nigh hither, meaning King James, don't come any closer, but take off your shoes from off your feet, for the ground you're standing on is holy ground. Can you imagine being Moses at the end of a broken life, going up to sea, and all of a sudden God begins to speak some fresh hope. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Have you ever been to the place that you thought it was over? Or you've been to a place that a trial was so hard in your life that you were about to give up and settle, but then God showed up and started speaking to you. And when God, when you get that encounter with God, it's like all of a sudden the burden leaves and you have some more hope and knowing that God can take you. Come on, we've been there through a surgery, through something happening in our house. God shows up and says, it's going to be all right. That's what was happening to Moses. I want you to see. Moses. I want you to see this broken 80-year-old man who was a criminal, who was a fugitive, who had once lived in a palace, who has watched his life go from turmoil to turmoil, a promising life that never met the promise. But he saw his life go up. Well, the life, as a matter of fact, had more downs than up had more struggles than good times, and yet the same broken man had settled down and was now living a life that he was not satisfied with as he watched all the brokenness go through. What am I saying? I'm saying that if you've ever seen God show up, you know that Moses sitting there all broken was trying to find another reason to go on. But Moses knew that when God spoke it broke. So you know one of the most tragedies in a person's life is when you're sitting there living a life that you know is not the life you're supposed to live, but you feel like time has passed and you can't get your old life back. Mm -hmm. One of the most tragic things when you sit around not knowing that God has enough power to bring back, to make better, to do stuff in your life, but because of what has happened, all the tragedies, you've been calculating all the tragedies in your life, but you have not seen and honored and worshipped all the God that's been in your life. Does anybody know there's been more God than tragedies? Now, if you don't agree with that, don't give God a break, but if somebody can say, I've had more God show up in my life 
devil takes you through it because you don't realize he carries you till you get to your purpose and till you get to the things that he has for you. What am I talking about? You need to know there was an old drunk named Fred. <laughs> old drunk Fred used to hang around town. All he would is do anything for a drink of liquor. Matter of fact, he was homeless, didn't have anywhere to live. Fred was sleeping in alleys. How Fred survived? He would go to people's houses and break the leaves. Wow. He would go to people's houses and clean out their garage. Yeah. He would go to folks' houses and anything had to survive. Then you see Fred walking down the street, tilting up that body. You see Fred saying, and other people who were the same age died. Fred was out living them all. I guess he was pickled by the liquor. I don't know what it was, but Fred seemed like he was never sick. He didn't have any health insurance, but Fred made all of us know some Fred down there drinking. I'm going to change, but he ain't got half the problem that you and I have. But you know what happened? One day he went down to the Salvation Army, and Fred got saved. Wow. And when Fred got saved, he turned his life around. He was living in the Salvation Army in their homeless shelter. And when he was living in the homeless shelter, one day everybody had gone out. Fred was in the shelter working because he was a janitor now. He saw the orphanage across the street on fire. He ran to the front desk, told him, call 911. Then he ran outside across the street, and nobody was there. He looked up, and kids were trapped in the building. So Fred ran into the building, saved one child, came back out. Saved two children, came back out. Saved three children, came back out. Smoke getting in his lungs, coughing. He ran back in again, saved four children. All the way up till Fred had saved eight children. He woke up in the hospital. With everybody standing around his bed. And the pastor was there, everybody thanking him. And then all of a sudden, Fred began to cry. The pastor said, We're all thanking you, Fred. It's all right. Are you hurting? He said, No, Pastor. Watch what Fred said. He said, No. What's the matter? He said, I've done some bad things in my life. Woo, I didn't think my life was good for nothing. Yeah. And yet, all of y'all standing around here. And I just don't understand. And the pastor said, Fred, don't worry. Your life is good for something. All those years you were drinking, all those years you were out there on your own, that was God carrying you till he could get you to the purpose that he made you for. Your purpose was to save those eight orphans. Your purpose was to make sure the building didn't burn down. The pastor said, your purpose cannot be denied. If you got a promise, all you got to do is say, I also got a purpose. I need somebody to celebrate their purpose because your purpose will make sure the promise comes your direction. My purpose is to make sure This temple that I'm building may not 
look as good on the outside, but God said, what I'm getting ready to do on your inside is going to be better than what I'm going to do on your outside. How many you know when I was younger, I ain't had no peace every day. God said, I'm about to give you a new life, and I'm going to give you some peace, and I'm going to let you know, quit worrying about what you see and worry about what God can do. Do you know what happened? People are messed up because you're looking at what you lost, looking at what you had, looking at what was good. Somebody ought to know God, that's what he said in this text, is getting ready to give you Yeah, you preach that, but you don't know the hell I've been through. 
I, I'm not trying to be curt or hard or anything like that, but I would tell you, so what? I don't know, but what's the, you don't know the hell I've been through. Quit trying to be Joe. Quit trying to make your, your pain any worse than anybody else's pain. Quit trying to act like you're the only one been through. So when you get up and come to church, all you do is ride in on your pain. So what you got a good cause? All of us got a good cause. Where are the people that said, it has been so bad I couldn't have quit, but somehow I held on to the Lord. What am I saying? You better quit trying to use, you got a good reason. So I can move on with this message, I'll give that to you. You got a good reason, but so what? I cried because I had no shoes till I met a man that had no feet. Do you realize there's somebody out there who is living worse than you, and they still got their hands up, and you wonder why you can't get a blessing, because you But such is common to man. And God will make a way out if you trust him. So you got to realize that it has to be God and not you on your side. Because it says, Moses took the sheep up Mount Sinai. Look what it said. Okay. This is for all the people who ain't worship yet. Watch this. Because I know you got a heavy thing on. Watch this. Look what it said. He led them to a dry place. The word of Horeb, the mountain of God. It's interpreted as a dry wilderness. What you do is, since you won't let God lead your life, and you can't stand the pain, you keep leading your life into a drier, drier, drier state until you sit there hopeless. I'm about to give you something, make you a shout. It was not Moses who made the first move. It was God who made the first move. You may be sitting here with your dry self, but God get ready to knock you over with a blessing because God showed up when he said, watch this, the Bible said, and when he saw that Moses turned aside. No, 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 I can't. I'm sorry, Pastor God, I can't stop there. God is here to knock you down with a blessing. I can't leave that yet. Why in the world would God come to a broke person? Because he wants you to invest back in him. Can you at least know that God get ready to knock me? Anybody want to be knocked down by a new blessing in God? As a matter of fact, so your neighbor knows that God is the kind of God that knocks you down with a blessing. It said, but then the angel of the Lord appeared. God showed up. God said, if you will grab this in 2022, you can change your life because God showed up because the angel of the Lord came and God called out to Moses. And he said he wanted to use him to do something. Here's the problem that most people are like. You, you go by chronological time. The word is chronos. Chronos is the word for aging. It's the Latin word for chronological or time that moves, you know, laterally. It just keeps moving. That kind of time makes us look and forget we got a God who's not bound by time. That's right. That's right. And so what am I saying? You live by chronos, right? Uh, I'm getting older, can't run like I used to, can't walk like God said, I don't care. If you only have a little bit left, I can use that little bit. And then God moves by kairos time. Kairos time is a time, the definition of the word kairos is God said, my time is not your time. God said, I got a season to give you a blessing if you can just hold on for your time. So God works in season. All you got to know is, if you hang on long enough, God got a miraculous season for those who will keep working because the Bible said when God saw he turned aside. If you don't turn aside, God can't bless you. You got to learn how to turn aside. So you can't come in church and not turn aside. Can somebody help me out here? I know the folk on TV can't do this, but this family right here just came in. Y'all came in. Y'all change your seat for a minute. Come move up one seat. Move up one row. Uh, let me see what I said. Uh, back there, Judy. Smile over across the hall here. Just smile over across the aisle. Every now and then, yes. when you come to church, you got to turn aside from your regular routine. You got to quit looking for your regular seat. You got to get a regular lesson because you come into church. You ain't expecting God to do anything else. You sit in the same seat, get the same praise, get the same glory. And God is saying, oh, if they would just understand, it's your season. And I have three people that will praise God for a new season. Somebody hot this my season. Elmer Alvarez was a homeless man in New Haven, Connecticut. Elmer had lived in the cold winters of Connecticut. 
all his life. Homeless. Lived by petty crimes and whatever he could do. Well, this one time, Elmer was walking down the street saw a $10,000 check with no name on it. He could have filled it out and got the money. But Elmer said, you know what? I thought I need to find the owner. Elmer said for the first time in his life, he thought about what this person must be going through. He lost that check. So Elmer found the owner who was Roberta Curtis. And Roberta was a real estate agent. And when Elmer found her and gave her a check, she looked at Elmer, and Elmer said, I know, you know, I don't look that good, but I'm giving you this check. And he said, wait a minute. He said, wait a minute. She said, uh-uh, you must go know. God connected us. I'm not much different than you. I was a single mother. I was working on my own. I was homeless one time. But then I went to real estate school, and I'm good now. And so what she did, she gave him a monetary gift. Elmer had done the right thing. She gave him a monetary gift. But Elmer turned aside that day because she did more than that. She paid his rent for seven months. Wow. She sent him to real estate school. Wow. She dressed Elmer up again. Now Elmer works in her real estate company. He was homeless. He was lost. But because he turned aside, Elmer turned his whole life around. Maybe today, if you would just turn aside, put that picture up. If you would just turn aside, you would understand. I want y'all to see that. Here is Elmer. Here is Elmer. and he's going to be the director. You go from living in the street, eating in the garbage, to picking people off the street and giving them a place. You better give God some glory. The reason you can't get that kind of blessing is because Elmer had to change his whole script. He turned aside and gave up 10000 when he had nothing. The second point in this text is right here. You must also interpret God's passion for you. Not only must you understand you must interpret God's passion for you. That's verse 6. They put it up back there. Moreover, I am the God of your father. I am the God. Number 7, he said, I've seen the affliction of my people. Listen to me. God's passion for you. Quit trying to be in the church and listen to what I'm saying. God has passion for you. Why does God still want you? You can't answer. You ain't done nothing so special. It's because God has a passionate love for you. Even when you do wrong, God passion loves you. You want to go back to your seat? You can you good? All right. <laughs> Dude said, I just turned aside. I'm going to give her some bread. She understand? Get my blessing anywhere I sit. Watch this. Watch this. You got to understand that. He said, I've seen. I've seen. I've seen. I've seen. Then God said that 10th person. I'm sending you. Yeah. 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 So that means, with your broken up life, with all the excuses you're making, do you know that you made it to 2022? And last thing he said is, you don't understand. 
understand my power. Uh -huh. I have power to turn any situation around, but you must understand it. And the second thing Moses had to interpret is that with all I've done, with all I've been through, he still has a personal covenant with me. Don't, don't, don't mess that one up. He gonna show up to you if you don't show up to anybody else. Yeah. He's got a personal. God got some. Thank what's what's on your list? Thank up God. in heaven, God check them all. Wow. Mm. But you gotta interpret the fact that God's still using you, that He has a passion Thank for you. Mm -hmm. Last point. Moses looked at God. Verse thirteen. I'm sorry. Verse ten. He said, "Who am I?" Last thing you must understand, you must invest in God's possibility for you. You must interpret God's passion for you. Right. And finally, you must incorporate God's plan like it's your plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right there in the text. Mm -hmm. Moses said, who am I? That's the problem with a lot of saints. When God makes a new promise, you can't grab it because all you know is you. That's the wrong question to ask. What you ought to ask when God says, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and I'm sending you, you shouldn't ask, who am I? You ought to ask, who is my God? Yeah. Now, once you clarify who your God is, there ought to be some joy on your road right now. Once you clarify who it is that promised, you ought to know I can go through anything. Once you know that I'm serving a God who's impossible, you don't care what the devil does. When the devil gets on your track, instead of saying, who am I? You ought to say, who is my Let me know. Now instead of 
never too late. But you got a God with this kind of power. It's never too late. When you got a God that has this kind of passion, then it's never too late. When you got a God that still puts you in his plan. Let's give God a hand to praise.